STV, votre télé. PM on STV TV was good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the news. Coming up in this newscast, general voyage and road accidents in Cameroon government takes action. The Minister of Transport Edgar Alain Mebengo has suspended the travel agency for three months, measures taken after the road accident along the Douala Yaoundé Highway on October 23rd. Valorizing small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon while making them more competitive is the aim of the first forum for Cameroonian SMEs, launched in Douala by Laurent Serge Etundi, Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. Those who are top stories to the viewers, good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us. We can start in brief where Cameroon's Minister of Transport Edgar Alain Mabengo has suspended the travel agency General Express from circulating for a period of three months. These measures, according to the minister, is to bring a little calm after an accident which claimed about 15 lives Monday night around Boom Nyebel on the Douala Yaoundé Highway. As of now, wounded persons are receiving treatment at the Edea Hospital, but the driver has been the driver's license has been suspended for a period of 12 months. And Spectrum, TV, Spectrum reporters in Yaoundé, in their duty of collecting information, were brutalized by officials of General Express Yaoundé. Back in the economic capital, activities are unfolding without any obstructions at General Voyage Bus Agency year after the accident that occurred Monday night. Peter Sosier was present and put together the following report. It is business as usual at the Genoa Voyage Bus Agency in Bopi Douala. Despite Monday's tragic bus crash around Bumyabel on the Yaoundé Douala Highway, appointment is truly respected. The bus programmed for 10 a.m. is set to hit the road. The driver awaits the last passengers and some final checks before takeoff. At the waiting room, one of the passengers confided in us that another bus, which was simultaneously heading to Yaoundé from Douala, transported wounded passengers from last night's accident. Some of the passengers who could not withstand the tragic scene boarded other vehicles, abandoning their luggages. This morning, they are here to collect them. Some of the die-hard clients of the agency are unperturbed about the incident. Brand loyalty, we can say, but it is more than that to them. The October 23 bus crash is just a normal occurrence on the roads, they say. It would take more than that to scare them away. The threats of the manager forced us to film just from outside the agency. If officials of the agency seemed to be taking things normal, the arrivals are making big news out of the catastrophe, using it as a seductive weapon to tame some faithfuls to their side. Away from the negative publicity, Activities are unfolding hitch free at the agency. It still remains unclear if authorities are considering sanctions on the agency. Monday road accident involving General Express Voyage is just one of the many accidents that has occurred by the same travel agency. Between January 2017 to date, the number of deaths are unbelievable. John Possama. The over 15 persons that are reported dead in a ghastly motor accident Monday night in Bumyabel comes to add to the increasing number of road accidents caused by General Voyage. On January 5th, 2017, the said agency was involved in a deadly accident at Manyai, a locality in Bumyabel, with a handful of deaths recorded. Along the Puma Edea Highway, one death was recorded on January 19, 2017, with 35 injured in a face-to-face -face collision the interurban agency had with a heavy-duty truck as onlookers blamed the cause on high speed. Another accident which saw the loss of lives along the Yaoundé Bafusam Highway was recorded by the same travel agency two months later when its 70-seater bus collided with a lorry. 
The accident, which occurred at about 5 a.m., recorded over seven dead with scores wounded. This latest accident along the Dwala Yaounde Highway comes to add to the long list of road casualties recorded by the SET Travel Agency in 2017. The need to improve airport aircraft or infrastructures and intensify preparations ahead of the 2019 African Cup of Nations has come over discussions in Yaoundé. That was yesterday. Talks at the 2017 ordinary session of the National Civil Aviation Safety Committee was chaired by the Minister of Transport, Edgar Alec Mepengo. Line it with the details. The International Civil Aviation Organization lastly conducted a civil aviation security audit in Cameroon in 2015 and highlighted that Cameroon is 63.80% in compliance with international safety standards. What is mostly needed for the year to come is to improve on infrastructure. If safety as well as security are in terms of infrastructures, equipment, uh, uh, human resources, procedures, so these are the pillars of what we are doing in civil aviation. Now, what we are, uh, the government is engaged in getting two major projects, and one on security helped by the presidency itself, and the second helped by the World Bank. Both will again increase the level of fencing because we have a huge problem regarding the fencing of airports, and we have also problem in terms of uh, additional equipment. In, 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 in summary, this is what is expected. During the first ordinary meeting of the National Civil Aviation Safety Committee, which has been opened in Yaoundé this October 24th by the Minister of Transport, Edgar Alembemengo, a critical analysis for Cameroon's air safety and security has been made. So in security, we are about 63%, and in safety, we are 60%, which are above the, the, the world level which is not bad, but of course, in terms of security and safety, we want to increase at all, and, and this is the purpose of this committee. The National Civil Aviation Safety Committee will also look at air transport measures ahead of the 2019 African Cup of Nations to be hosted by Cameroon. For a more protected, efficient, and competitive small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon, the first forum for Cameroonian SMEs has been launched in Douala by Laurent Serge Etundingwa, Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. That was yesterday. The aim of this forum in Douala centered on the role of small and medium-sized enterprises and ways of making them more efficient and competitive. Major partners in the development of the country with a contribution of 34% to the gross domestic product, according to the 2009 survey of the National Institute of Statistics, small and medium-sized enterprises are plagued by a number of challenges. The defi de mobilization de fonds propres engendrant une réelle fragilité. Small and medium-sized enterprises are facing a number of challenges, such as lack of funds amateurism of directors who are usually not well trained and prepared to head companies. Competitiveness, the multiplicity of illicit goods, fraud of all sorts. For a more protected, efficient and competitive SMEs in Cameroon, the cartel of enterprises GCAM has initiated the Forum for Cameroonian SMEs to conceive diverse strategies and solutions for their development. This forum aims at providing concrete solutions to the problem of SMEs and to put in place an inclusive plan of action to boost their vitality and viability. Launching the maiden edition of the Forum for Cameroonian Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises in Douala this October 24, the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises underscored the role of SMEs in the emergence of the country. Cameroon cannot achieve emergence if its small and medium-sized enterprises are not efficient and competitive. Emphasis has also been put on fighting illicit trade 
unfair competition and market limitation strategies. Still on economy, a regional job forum is ongoing in Douala. Employers, job seekers, and government funded structures for social reinsertion will discuss ways of curbing unemployment and creating jobs. Peter Sosi. As the economic bedrock of Cameroon, the Litwa region is hardest hit by the scourge of unemployment and underemployment. With an unemployment rate of 43.7%, only 7.1% of the active population have access to decent jobs. Vocational training centers and government-funded facilities promoting social reinsertion do not have a firm mastery of their roles in tackling the unemployment equation. But one of the impeding factors is access to information. Life is information. If you don't have information, you can die, although in your pocket there's food or there's money. So the first thing is information. The Litwa Delegation of Labor and Social Security has rallied employers' associations, the National Employment Fund, the Chamber of Commerce, and other stakeholders to seek ways of changing the status quo in a two-day forum which has opened Tuesday in Douala. Actors are upbeat that the platform will enable them to solve the dilemma. The student came to train inside our training center. What, what uh, did these people require? What the company are waiting for? You know, it's, it's good for us to know exactly so that we should, we, we should build our program according to what are, uh, the company are waiting for. The Secretary General of the Litwa region, who opened the forum, has called on job seekers to avail themselves of this opportunity to acquire skills that will enable them meet the needs of the job market. Away from that, experts in the conservation of wildlife in Africa and in the Congo Basin are meeting in Douala to discuss on how to preserve the fauna, a species which is under threat by poaching in the Congo Basin forest. John Bosama was present and filed the following for us. Given the high demand for poaching products like elephant tusk, which is gaining steam in the black market, these protected species in the Congo Basin are increasingly being hunted down illegally, resulting in their slow disappearance. So, um, if you look at the current events, um, there is serious threat on wildlife, you know, um, especially on big mammals. Outside the case of elephants, elephant has become a problem. If we don't really put more effort, uh, such an organization is very, very, very welcome um, to fight because it's focused, this organization is focused on anti-poaching. Uh, you know, elephants, the ivory, illegal trafficking of ivory has made um, the situation very, very serious. So the population of elephant is decreasing seriously. Also, we found that um, as time goes on, new threats uh, are also centered on new species like um, the, the, the pangolins. Uh, they are now really hunted for their scales. A meeting of experts in the Congo Basin, which opens in Douala this Tuesday, will bring together experts from countries like Central African Republic, Gabon, to seek solutions to this ill. Uh, we have to put strategies. Not a single country cannot uh, succeed. So we need. Uh, a combined strategy from various Central African countries. You know, animals don't have boundaries. They don't have passport. They move from one country to the other. And we, ha our legislations uh, need to really be harmonized within these countries to be tackled the problem globally for efficient results. During this three-day meeting in the economic capital, emphasis will be laid on putting the organization in charge of wildlife in Central Africa on track. Here at the expert meeting of the organization for the conservation of wild fauna in Africa, it is an organization which was created since 1981, but since then it hasn't really functioned well. Uh, it hasn't really meet its goal that were set at the beginning. So um, recently, uh, the ministers of the countries that formed this organization, Central African countries, met and gave an assignment to Cameroon, the Minister of Forestry and Wildlife Cameroon. And today, uh, we have prepared a certain number of files, amongst which the most important and prominent um, is the constitution of the team that will 
uh, henceforth uh, lead um, this organization. This forum will provide an outlet where experts will come up with ideas to protect wildlife in Africa and in the Congo Basin. Health in this newscast, we focus on oral tooth care and children. And on that, some 20 dentists in line with the oral health month have been carrying out sensitization campaigns in primary and nursery schools in the country. This to better educate younger ones on how to care for their mouths. Veronica Aji. We brush two times in the day, in the morning after breakfast and in the evening after supper. What are the things that we use for brushing our teeth? Brushing the teeth with a fluoride toothpaste, especially after morning breakfast and before going to bed at night, protects the child's cavity. Dental experts are of the opinion that a proper tooth hygiene from childhood to adulthood is the guarantee to a bright smile and a bright future. Sterilization campaign is what we call uh, uh, bright smiles, bright future. Uh, the philosophy behind this campaign is that when we train children how to take care of their mouths when they are young, they carry the knowledge to the home and also when we train teachers they reinforce the training of the children. Then the children will carry the knowledge to their home, then the children will be able to tell the parents the right practices when it, takes, when it comes to taking care of the, of the mouth and the, when the parents are well educated indirectly they can transfer the knowledge to the community and eventually the future of the community will be bright. Dr. Agua Michael, accompanied by some other dental surgeons, have embarked on a one-month sensitization campaign targeting nursery and primary school children. Yes. Before eating and after eating. Yes. So those are the two times, you. In the morning and in the night. Yes, in the night. Clap for him. During exchanges with children in one of the primary schools here in Douala, the kids were schooled on how to brush the teeth. Also, it is important to do dental floss every day, reduce sugaries, and visit the dentist regularly. Then you brush the area that you use for These dental surgeons have one month to make a reality the project Bright Smiles, Bright Futures in Cameroon. And that report brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Join Oyan Donkey at exactly 7 p.m. for the news in the French language and Veronica Aji at 8 p.m. for the news in English. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. STV, votre télé.